Colin here from the ancestralmind.com back for the first episode of the new carnivore cooking show. And what better way to kick it off than how to cook a steak? See, I've been cooking steak for years now, but it wasn't only until recently that I really dialed in my preferred techniques. With this technique, you can take any steak and cook it to perfection every single time. So this is gonna be the first episode of many more to come focused on animal-based recipes and techniques. I wanna give you guys the skills, not just a bunch of recipes. You can find recipes all day long. What those recipes are always leaving out are the many variables that come up when you're trying to cook a protein, for example, or you're trying to use this stove, that pan, that whatever, and you're trying to make it all kind of fit within the confines of this little recipe list. There's so many things that are left out in recipes, and that's why when you learn basic cooking technique, you can almost either ignore the recipes or use recipes strategically based on what you're going for. So we're gonna spend a lot of time focusing on technique and today is how to cook a steak. First, we're gonna start with our ribeye. This is a grass-fed, grass-finished ribeye from the local HEB. It is actually really tender, really delicious, great price. I pick these up when I'm in a bind. Next, we have our wild kosher salt. This is my preferred flake salt to use for seasoning. Avocado oil, this is my favorite high heat cooking oil. Make sure it says avocado oil only, not some blend with safflower or sunflower. Next up, you need a trusty pair of tongs. Literally lifesaver, absolute must have. Kerry Gold, this is probably one of the better butters. Just get it, it's simple, unsalted. A good, sharp chef's knife. I mean, you just have to have it. And figure out how to sharpen it or take it and get someone sharpened or buy an online sharpener on Amazon and then Use it properly, learn some basic knife skills. Highly recommended. This is one of those things that you need to go to the store and buy right now. Get them on Amazon, 12, 15 bucks. It's gonna be a combination wire rack with a sheet pan. This thing is a lifesaver. Next up is a cutting board with a groove. When you slice into that steak, the juice is gonna go everywhere and you wanna save that juice. You want to eat it, drink it, anything. <laughs> and of course you can use this to dice up other things. Get a good solid cutting board with a groove. Finally, we have the cast iron pan. This is from Lodge. I use it all the time. It's my go-to for cooking steak. I like the, I think it's an eight inch size. Maybe it's a 10 inch. The 12 inch is kind of big and heavy, but the 10 inch is just perfect. Okay, it's time to get ready. We're gonna take the wire rack out of the sheet pan. We're going to use that as our work surface. This just makes a lot of sense for, as you'll see, a couple reasons. I like to cut from the front of the package so I don't cut into the steak too much, which can damage the meat and then cause uneven cooking. So let's pull this bad boy out, get it on the pan. We're then gonna take a paper towel, pat it dry as much as possible. We don't want any liquid on the surface because that will ruin the sear. So we want it nice and dry. All right, now we're gonna season liberally with our wild kosher flake salt. Let's zoom in and get a nice close-up of this so you can get an idea of how much salt I'm using. It's gonna take a couple passes. And I like to pat it down, and I also like to season the sides. Makes all the difference. And then all that extra salt that's in that sheet pan, and now you see why I'm using the sheet pan. It's perfect. And if you have a spice blend or a spice rub, that's even better. This technique with the sheet pan it's just perfect. Look at that. Use most of that salt. And now we're going to take the avocado oil and we're going to rub it down a little bit. And this is also going to help the salt get into the meat. Or if you had a rub, it's just, it makes a better crust. The more you get it going this way, the better the crust. So don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. So I'm preheating the pan. It's very important that you preheat. This is probably the most important thing. And since I started preheating my pan more and for longer, my steaks have been better. And so I'm wiping the pan down a little bit here, just get some crust out from other cooking sessions. I don't want any burn bits in there that are gonna get in my crust or that are going to smoke up the room. And you could always consider rubbing this down with some avocado oil and some paper towel. But this pan's pretty seasoned. If you look at it, it's got that natural, nice cast iron seasoning. And that's because I don't use soap and I cook in it a lot, and I always leave a little bit of oil in there and rub it down. So that's nice and perfect and ready to go at a moment's notice. So I wasn't recording when I slapped this bad boy in that pan, but basically all I did was drop the steak in the hot pan so that I got a steady sizzle, a little bit of steam coming off, but you don't want a lot of smoke. 
with that steady sizzle, keeping it at about medium high to high temperature, depending on your stove and your equipment and everything. This is where you're gonna wanna keep it and you're gonna go for two minutes here. So after two minutes, I'm gonna have a nice crust. And of course you could maybe do 1.5 minutes or even some people like to do one minute at a time and constantly flip. I prefer about two minutes on the initial sear, two minutes on the next sear. And then I'm gonna butter baste it, which is gonna add to the crust on each side and then finish it in the oven if needed. So it's time to flip. We're gonna grab the tongs. We're gonna gently pull it out. If it's sticking to the pan, you're gonna leave it in there, but it should lodge from the pan if you properly preheat it and you're using some avocado oil. You'll have a little bit of crust. We're gonna flip here. As you can see, we've got a beautiful crust already working and we're gonna go for another two minutes. I'm not gonna to touch the steak. I'm gonna let it sit, develop a nice crust. Two minutes on medium high-ish temperature and without fail, you should have a crust. Okay, two minutes later, we're going to flip again, check the other side, check the crust. As you can see, it's got that deep golden brown, and you know you're doing it the right way. Now from here, we're gonna lower the temperature so that we don't burn the butter, and we're gonna throw in about, let's say two tablespoons of butter. Grab a kitchen towel so you can control the pan, and get that into the pan so it starts melting. And then move the pan around until it's nice and melted, trying to modulate the heat, dial back the heat a little bit because butter can burn quite easily. And then once that's fully melted, we're gonna start tipping the pan and we're gonna get to the butter basting. So here, my pan's actually not hot enough and I haven't used this induction burner before so I'm trying to figure it out. I'm gonna crank the heat up a little bit more but generally you want your butter bubbling. That's the right temperature to get a good butter base. As you can see, the butter's not even fully melting. It's just not hot enough and so, these are things that you figure out. The more you do it, the more steaks you cook and the more you get used to your equipment. Still trying to get the pan hot enough so that I can do a true butter baste. I like to keep the steak at the top of the pan so that when I start basting, I'm gonna tilt the pan down and that's gonna keep direct heat from overcooking the exterior of the steak. And then we're just gonna do a butter baste here with a spoon, about 30 to 45 seconds. And again, if I had to do this over, I would have kept this pan a lot hotter so as you can see, we got a little bit deeper crust on that side. We're gonna now do a base on the other side. Butter's still not as hot as I'd like, but I don't wanna overcook the steak, so we're gonna pull it out. We're gonna put it on that wire rack, and that's gonna rest for four minutes under foil. Turn your pan off, let your butter sit. Sometimes, depending on the thickness of the steak, I'm gonna pour some of that butter onto the steak while it rests. I was actually concerned when I did this after the fact because I thought I might have overcooked the steak a little bit, especially if you see when I put the probe thermometer in there, it seems like I might have overcooked it. So this is reading 136, which is not good, 140. And so I thought I actually ruined the steak and this video. Sometimes these probe thermometers can be a bit inaccurate. So I was just gonna hope that maybe I cut into it and there'd be a nice pink in there. But if I was going based on this, I would have overcook the steak. You're going for about a 127 to 128, and then when you take it off and let it rest, it's gonna have some carryover cooking of a couple degrees to get that nice medium rare temperature. Some like it a little bit more rare. I tend to like it a little bit more pink. That's gonna be a personal preference, and you can find plenty of guides of the different temperatures that you might wanna cook it to online. So now we're gonna let it rest for four minutes and then slice in. Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for. It's rested for four minutes. We're gonna take it off the rack and we're gonna preserve any of those juices in there because that is just all flavor. Pour that right over the steak or you can pour that into your butter base that is still reserved in your pan. Now I'm gonna grab my sharpest knife here. I'm gonna try to find the grain and slice against it. But sometimes with these strip or ribeyes, it's just hard to get a good slice going. So I don't always go by this, especially since you're gonna take small bites and if it's already tender cut, it tends to not matter. And so using a really sharp knife, I'm gonna go for really you, up to you how thick of a cut you want, but I like these kind of thinner cuts, especially since I didn't pre-season this. I've cooked this right out of the package. So when I can do thinner cuts, I can pour a lot of that seasoned butter and the juice over it. And so each bite is gonna be flavorful. Whereas a thicker cut would have less of that flavor because I didn't pre-season ahead of time. So there was less chance that that salt is going to absorb through the meat. And then we're gonna grab that reserved butter, which is why the butter basting method in the cast iron is my favorite <laughs> because it's just so flavorful. And we're gonna pour it over the steak and then we're gonna eat.
I like to eat it right on the cutting board. Why dirty a plate? Now this is a grass fed, grass finished steak. I'm gonna turn the fat a little bit. I'm in a leaning phase right now as it is. I'm trying to get to my lowest body fat of my life. So I'm gonna trim some of this fat and this isn't an organic or similar to some of the other suppliers that I've been buying from. This is from HEB. So it's just gonna be a little suspect in the, in the quality. It is very good meat. I really like these steaks. I'm very impressed that this is grass fed, grass finished. But I try to reserve eating the fat from steaks only when it's my most trusted suppliers and I know it's truly grass fed, grass finished or organic if possible. So that's gonna be it for this how to cook a steak on a carnivore diet video. Although it's really how to cook a steak on any diet, but this is truly the carnivore way I would say. So if you have any questions or comments, you can drop them below. If there's any suggestions or things I left out or anything related to the video today and or cooking a steak or other recipes you want me to do since I plan on doing a lot more of these on the channel. This was really fun to record because I got to eat the steak right after and this was actually breaking my fast at 7 p.m. first meal of the day. It's really how I love to break my fast nowadays. Drop your questions, comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe and do all those things and actually go out and make an effort to follow the same technique. I think you'll enjoy it. And the more you do it, the easier it'll get. Now I can cook a steak from the top of my head. Actually perfect every time. And it's taken a lot of practice, a lot of steaks. It also just took a very specific set of techniques. And if you follow everything in today's video, your steaks are gonna come out perfect. Uh, obviously I didn't use an oven on this, but if this was a thicker cut, I would finish it in the oven and then I would wait till my probe thermometer gave me the correct reading, hopefully it would. Um, so there's gonna be a little bit of trial and error there, depending on what you're using and ovens and th things like that. But if I was using an oven, I would do it at 250 degrees and I would have the probe thermometer let me know when it hits about 126 or 27. And then I would pull it out, let it rest, and then follow the same technique here on the cutting board of slicing and eating immediately. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I'm calling the Wild well CEO. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, hey, Colin here. Thanks for watching that video. I got a free PDF for you, The Seven Principles of Living Wild. Short and sweet, not long, not gonna be a novel you have to read or anything. Just a simple reference of the things that make you a healthy human. So click on the button below, get that right now, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.